Good evening, and you're very welcome to our webinar on the business law criminology options at the university. Um, my name is Judith Caffrey, and I work in the admissions office here at the university. Um, I'm joined by Professor Joseph Coughlin, who is the head of our School of Business, and uh, Dr. Fergus Ryan from our School of Law and Criminology, and also by two of our students, Jamie, who is a business uh, in the marketing area of a business student, and Katie, who is a postgraduate student now in the law uh, domain. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Professor Joseph Coughlin, who will begin proceedings, I think. Is that correct? Um, yep, that's correct. And um, if you have any questions, please put them into our Q&A and we will address them as we go along. OK, thank you. Thanks very much, Judith. Um, I know it's late in the evening, so we're just going to get started straight away and um, go with that. So just to say that my name is Joe Conklin. I'm the head of School of Business, and I'm going to talk to you about options in our business degree um, available at Maynooth University. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk through um, our options and the programs that we have. And Jamie, one of our second year students in our BBS marketing, is going to talk to you a little bit about some advice that he can give you because he was in your shoes if you're a sixth year a couple of years ago and then we'll pass you on to my colleague Dr Fergus Lyon the head of school of law and criminology who will talk to you about some law and criminology options and then we'll have some room for questions at the end if you have any burning questions or questions you think won't wait feel free to put them into the Q&A as Judith said and one of my colleagues or I will answer them as we go through the presentation or afterwards so Feel free to do that. They're anonymous, so any there's no such thing as a, a, an odd question. We say that in lectures too, too. So I mean, quite happy for you to ask any question you might wish to have. And we do appreciate you joining us this late in the evening. Um, I know the weather's not great, but but even still, it's probably better. It's nice. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, come and listen to us talk about options to join us in Minute. So why would you study business? Um, we suggest that all organizations, no matter who they are, public sector, private sector, um, any sort of organization, needs to raise finance and needs to get money in to do what they want to do. So be that, you know, finance, build a children's hospital, as the government is doing, slowly but surely, or to, um, you know, make a product or sell a service or pay an influencer, whatever it might be. And then they have to account for that income and expenditure, money coming in and money coming out, over a period, we do that to see how we're getting on. Accounting is really a game to some extent to see how we're getting on with, with our business. More money at the end than at the beginning means we're doing well. And if it's the other way around, we're probably in a bit of trouble. Also, we might have to pay taxes, which go towards various other things um, in this in society and pay for their various facilities that we all use every day. So that's one of the reasons why, why organizations raise finance and, and do accounting and why those are both important. Almost every product and service you use and value every day. So think about maybe what you're wearing, probably sitting on a chair, you might be sitting on a sofa, might be sitting on your bed, uh, watching this and think about where they came from, who paid for them, how they got there. Why did you pick that particular phone or device that you're working on? Why did you pick the clothes that you're wearing? Um, why did you pick maybe the jewellery, makeup, whatever you're, you're wearing as well, um, your last purchase? So how did you find out about that? That's a marketing process. So marketing can actually get you to think about the products and services that we use. It can also get you to think about social issues. So, for example, it would have been quite common for us to be uh, educated through marketing about social distancing and the importance of, you know, making sure that, you um, we wear masks during COVID and so on. All those sort of things are very much a kind of a marketing message for social good. We see campaigns at the moment about people if you want to stop smoking and all those sort of things. And all this is organized through management. So if you've ever bought anything online, if you ever bought anything from a website, that be that Temu or you know you bought it from Etsy or you bought it from Amazon, whatever website you might have bought from, or one of the Irish company websites as well, that product or service had to get to you. So maybe your local DHL FedEx on post brought it to you. So how does that work? How can you maybe return a product if you don't like it? All that is very much a management process. The Higher Education Authority that runs the Irish third level sector runs a survey every year. And in that, business graduates are the, consistently among the most employable in Ireland. 
Ireland is a very much an open economy. We're a big part of the EU. Um, we have a, a very entrepreneurial set of people and companies in Ireland who try to generate new business and generate new products and services to sell all over the world. So we're very internationally focused. Um, a lot of our big businesses in Ireland are international businesses. People like Google, people like Meta, who run Facebook and Instagram. We have TikTok. We have all the pharmaceutical firms, we have med medical devices, lots and lots of industries that have chosen Ireland as their major home. But we also have domestic. So a lot of these are quite internationally oriented. You might have noticed some colors coming up there. Um, those particular ones are the key areas that we offer in business in Minute, and we also offer these in combination with other things. So this first next slide is all our programs. And I'll repeat this again in a different way, but effectively we have a lot of choice. So on the right-hand side at the top, we have a, a degree in marketing, a degree in business and management, and a degree in international business, and a degree as we go down in entrepreneurship. These are all coded as BBS, BBA. Uh, BBS is a three-year level eight, and a BBA is a four-year level eight, and the difference is either placement or year abroad, which is an additional year, and that's optional. You don't have to do it, but a lot of our students do. Our BBS, BBA International Business is without a language. We do offer options with language, which I'll come to in a few seconds. Down at the bottom, we have our finance-related degrees, so a quantitative finance degree if you want to work in the stock markets or in trading or anything like that. BA finance, which is more common. We've had to work in finance in the business, but either one is possible. Also, we have an accounting and finance degree and a business and accounting degree and a law and accounting degree. So these three degrees all offer full accounting exemptions. So they offer full cap one from Chartered Accountants Ireland. They also offer ACCA, SEMA and CPA. So all the major international bodies that operate in Ireland, we offer exemptions for them. Uh, law and business and law and accounting are offered with our colleagues in law and criminology. And um, Dr. Ryan is going to talk to you about options in law, in, in law and business and pure law and other options with law later on this evening. Uh, we also offer a business with sports science degree. That's two thirds business, one third sports science that launched last year. We also offer a business and languages degree. So this one has a lot of options. We have you in the business side, you can study marketing or management or international business or accounting. And on the languages side, you can do French or German or Spanish or Chinese. So in total, based on timetable stuff, we have 14 possible degree options there. And then we also offer a business and global cultures degree with our colleagues in, our colleagues in anthropology. Um, so that looks at how cultures develop in the global environment, along with the business subject of your choice, be that marketing, international business or management. And right in the center there, we have our arts degree. So on all those degrees, except the one on the top left with sports science, we offer the option to start in arts and finish with that particular degree for no additional year. So you can come into arts, do a series of modules and a series of subjects. Um, these are terms we use to illustrate how we, how we operate. And at the end of first year, you can transfer to any one of those other degrees to, if you did the right mix. We have a whole pile of information on our website about that, how it works. We even You can even find a booklet that our current first years have to use. So there's plenty of, of information available to help you make an informed choice. Um, so why business? Um, well, we would say that business is one of those few degrees that applies in every single sector of the economy. Um, Law is probably another one, to be honest, but business is definitely one. So you would have, for example, in a manufacturing environment, you have lots of business people managing processes. You might be working with engineers, computer scientists, product designers. We also work in the medical and healthcare um, area. So we work in that area as well, because what we do there is we we manage processes, manage people. Um, the pilots are there to represent the tourism sector and the travel sector, which are an important part of the Irish economy. And we would offer skills that, that those industries like as well. The Guard de Chacon are there to illustrate the public sector in Ireland. Um, and we would have lots of people who work, for example, from our finance degrees in the central bank and in other financial institutions as part of the way that Ireland is governed. And then uh, the final picture there is some sports people. So we're looking at a business and sports degree 
which has a direct link to this. But also many of our students end up working in sports, in marketing and various other areas like that as well. So my next set of slides are really to talk about the individual topics, the ones that were in color at the start. So management, for example, is about organization. So thinking about if you bought something online, let's say you bought something for a family member or a friend or a loved one for Christmas. Well, you'd hope it comes before Christmas. You hope you bought it in time. You might have paid for quick delivery. You might have decided to bundle some presents together from the same website to avail a free delivery. You might have bought it on, be very organized and bought everything on Black Friday and Cyber Monday um, earlier on in late November, early December. So there's trying to ensure that the right pieces are in the right places at the right time. So communication is very important. Leadership, a shared vision of what's going to happen making sure that things are done correctly with and through people. So in other words, making sure that you uh, have a good, well-trained workforce and systems to make things happen. So that's a mix of people and soft skills. So motivating people to go to work and do the job well, but also processes and technologies to ensure that nobody's left behind, that everything's done properly, that all the safety stuff is taken into account and so on. Our next degree is about marketing. Marketing is about a process of exchange. So with marketing, you have to give up something you have for something you want to have. Many of you might have a Spotify account. If you're lucky and you want to spend some money, you might have a paid Spotify account. So you pay money to have no ads. If, like a lot of us, you don't want to pay the money, um, you can have Spotify as well, but you have to pay by listening to ads. We see this with lots of game platforms. We see it with lots of different ways whereby you might gain extra things by by watching ads. YouTube, for example, is funded primarily by ads. And then there's also, that means we always have to pay for things. I mean, nothing in life is unfortunately free. Um, Meteor rebranding to air is a good example of a big brand change in Ireland in recent years. But also you can link your brand and your company to different people by using sponsorship. So for example, you'd have the GAA and Centra, um, uh, so Centra Super Value, for example, have a good link with the GAA and we see little with ladies football and so on. Um, there's quite good links there. So uh, Jamie Cullen is one of our students in second year. Uh, he's on our BBS marketing. So he's going to talk to you a little bit about his experience uh, on that particular degree. So over to you, Jamie. Yeah, so with the marketing degree in Manute now, um, as mentioned before, marketing as a whole is to do with exchanges and it's also to do with um, having communication with your consumers as a business is one of the things I found a lot to do with marketing. Um, I, I've chosen one module from my course here, which I found to be very um, beneficial to my understanding of marketing, which is consumer behavior, which is something you study in the second semester of first year. Consumer behavior has to do with why we consume and the history of how we've understood this. Um, it's described as a mix of psychology, sociology, economics, and anthropology. And it's a really unique module where you're looking exactly at almost human psychology and why we do certain things. Um, there's lots of real examples during the module as well to do with different marketing material. And, and you can kind of link to it yourself and say, oh, sure, I, I know how I feel about it. So... Like that's how other people are feeling about it as well. Um, I also found the final assignment for this module really unique as well, where you had to do a 1,000 word analysis of a commercial. And it was unique in a sense where it was short, but also really tough. But um, overall, I feel like that module was a big part of why I like marketing as a whole. Um, and just one resource I wanted to bring up, there, there's a link to it at the end of these slides, but um, when I was a six year student, I found a new course finder website to be very beneficial for finding more information about different courses and different modules. So it, even if you Google Manute course finder, um, you should be able to find this website and just click at the bottom um, to find more details on the course structure. You should be able to find a list of all the modules you'll be doing with each course that you find for any, any course in Manute. And with these modules, they will be exactly what you're studying and exactly what you'll be looking to learn with these modules, which I found very beneficial when I was choosing Manu myself. Um, just to close off here, um, I would just recommend that if you do go to Manute, you keep on top of your work in lectures, um, particularly with lectures now. There can be times where you'll miss a lecture here or there and you'll think, oh, I'll catch up on it. And a week will pass and all of a sudden you're behind on a few and you're 
you're really caught, caught up that way. So I, I'd recommend you do keep on top of your work. Um, but also in your first year, I'd recommend you join loads of clubs and societies because, um, well, for one, it's a chance to make friends and have a hobby. But it's also the later you get onto your degree, the, the less free time you'll have to be doing things like this. So I, I'd recommend you get in early and enjoy it while you can, let's say. Um, I'd also recommend you do get a part-time job while you're in Manute. There's plenty of opportunities inside the college where they have various things such as micro-internships or even the Starbucks or the Landis in Manuk are often hiring. Um, they can be quite beneficial to join or the Manute town itself also has plenty of jobs available. And finally, if there is an option with your course to go abroad or go in placement, I'd highly recommend it now. Um, I'm currently applying for a placement myself and there is a placement connect platform that you can go on as a Manute student and that helps you find a placement um, very easily. And then Manute also is connected with um, a decent few colleges in Europe and across the world and they can help you um, set up a studying, it, sorry, it'll help you study abroad more easily if you have the connections that way. So. That's the end of my part there. Thanks very much, Jamie, for that. And thanks for taking the time. Uh, Jamie has an exam tomorrow, so he's very good to give, give his time to us this evening. Um, so I'm going to move on and look at the next topic, which is international business. Um, so business involving two or more countries or business involving people or groups from different countries. Notice I didn't say you had to go abroad for that. A lot of international business happens in Ireland. A lot of our international business graduates live and work in Ireland. You don't have to travel. You might want to, but you don't have to. But it is a very internationally focused degrees. A lot, a lot of Irish business is international. We sell abroad to partners all over the world, particularly as part of the EU, but also other trading partners as well. So we often look at how we would manage people and organizations in this kind of globalized, turbulent economy that we have in societies. And we spend a lot of time looking at cultural differences and the benefits of them and learning from other cultures, something that, you know, with recent events, it's kind of good to reflect back on and say that we're trying to do our bit to, to ensure that um, we all work together um, to, to deliver results. You'd see that little iceberg on the side is a very common thing. Some things we can see, some things we can't uh, when we look at others. And Ireland is more multicultural than before. So it's great to see that. And, and a lot of people coming together to co great, get great business ideas and great opportunities to work with others um, in businesses. Entrepreneurship then is the activity of setting up a business. Um, but not every business is going to be set up from scratch. Some businesses are there already. They also need to innovate and be different. So they want to be agile. That means they want to be lively. They want to be close to the customer. They want to try and set up their own new products and services. So you'd see there on uh, the right of your sides, uh, Forbes magazine, which is a major business magazine worldwide. And that person on it, if you can see your slides, depending on the size of your screen, is a certain Miss Jenner. She doesn't look much like that anymore, I think, but that could be maybe due to makeup and maybe due to more other techniques. So she's uh, touted as one of America's billionaires, uh, mainly due to her lip products, and but also some other products that she has. She, not all of us have the advantages Kylie Jenner had, uh, in, being on television from very young and, and, and a lot of backing behind her. But a lot of companies do go off and look at, um, a lot of, sorry, individuals do go off and set up businesses and do very well out of it. Um, so it's not just for people who have those advantages. Um, at Minute, we also specialize in social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is a module on many of our degrees and it, looking at changing society through innovative solutions. So Maynooth is a social justice university. Um, we were founded on those principles. So it's a key element of what we do. It's kind of an interesting way of thinking about how we can turn our brains and turn our, our, our smart students that we have in Maynooth to look at kind of business and society together and try and come up with solutions for, for problems of society rather than just business problems. Our finance programs are uh, describing kind of the management and creation study of money, banking, credit investments, and, and various other things. Um, we work primarily with data. We look, for example, at what things are going to cost in a year, two years time to try and predict. We saw a lot of that happening with the fuel crises where ESB networks who manage the grid were trying to bid on price of gas and electricity in the future to try and fix the price for us. Sometimes that works, sometimes it's don't. It's 
kind of a bit like gambling, but in a very regulated way. But, you know, obviously there's a lots of checks and balances. If you're good at maths, if you like that kind of trying to understand how things work at a fundamental level, it's a really interesting area to, to work and study on. It has a good basis in economics. And uh, in terms of uh, the topics we teach, one of those is, is accounting. A lot of people think accounting is just debits and credits, but it's not. It's a lot more than that. It's based on that, but it moves it on and you become a business consultant and a business person at the end of your degree. So you end up managing a business, sourcing finance, making investment decisions, deciding whether or not to go into new markets, um, looking at how the government policies affect your business, maybe advising your customers and your clients and, and your employees about various financial aspects and understanding financial products like loans and credit cards and all that kind of stuff and being able to, to make a business out of that. So it's a really interesting area to work in. And it's not just number crunching. A lot of the time it is very strategic and very important. With accounting, we have a lot of professional exemptions, as I mentioned. So Chartered Accounts Ireland, SEMA, ACCA and CPA and the Irish Tax Institute. And also some finance ones in terms of GARP and the CFA Institute. And we have won the Irish Currency Awards for our postgraduate programs in the past. As um, Jamie was saying, he's thinking of doing placement for third year of his degree. We do placement on most of our programs. Uh, it's a one year, typically, uh, up to 10 months. And you can usually people do the full 12, uh, improves employability. We offer paid employment. Um, I think there was one student somewhere once that decided not to get paid. So we now can't say 100% of firms, but you know it's well over 95% of people get paid and it's well over minimum wage in most cases. So you end up doing a real job for a real company. Um, really good for, and many of them keep you on at the end of your degree. And so you get a, a, a you walk into a job when you finish your degree, which is a great benefit of this kind of program. So it's on most of our programs, the codes are all there. And on one of our programs, because it's a quantitative finance speciality, it's a 12 week rather than a 10 month placement. You don't have to do it, um, but we offer a lot of supports. We offer placement evenings. Jamie mentioned Placement Connect, our website that allows you to look at placement opportunities just for many students and allows you to, to make decisions about what you want to do on placement. We don't force you to do a placement. Um, we, we let you make a decision about it. Here are some examples of companies that we've worked with in the last couple of years, some household names, some not so much, across the mix of um, programs that we offer. If you don't want to do that, you could study abroad. And in fact, recently, we're now offering opportunities to work abroad as part of our programs. So we can, why would you go abroad? You might want to get international exposure, increase social network, improve employability. Typically, most programs in Minute, if not all of them, will offer some opportunity to go abroad for a semester, which is half a year or a year. Um, again, you make your choice during second year. It's not compulsory, but we do require it for our business and languages degree. So if you are going to be studying French, German, Spanish or Chinese with us, well, then we kind of do expect you to go to a country where that language is spoken to improve your language to the right level. I did say I'd come back to a whole list of degrees. Here they are again. So these are all our codes, um, starting off with our arts degree and then going through the specialist degrees that, that take uh, cognizant of all the subjects that I've been talking about already. What would I do in first year if you came to us? Well, first of all, we look at foundational skills in first year. So it depends on the degree, but typically you'd be doing some sort of management or understanding people's motivation, leadership and so on. Marketing, economics, some accounting perhaps, and then business's role in society. In second year, you start to specialize a little bit more in your core area, but still keeping a broad base of business. In accounting, for example, you would pick the fundamentals of the main areas that you're going to get exemptions for. Third year is often abroad or on placement, and an increasing number of our students are taking this option. And then in final year, you specialize and often have some core modules and a lot of choice to pick electives and choices from across our degree suite. Common questions, do you need to study Leaving Cert Accounting or Economics or Business? No, not required. If you have, that's fine, um, but we, we don't require it. We start from scratch. We would do business in a lot more depth than um, Leaving Cert, for example. So in Leaving Cert Business, you do marketing for a couple of weeks. We do it for, we do whole degrees in it. So we go into a lot of detail, a lot of depth, and really explore the why things actually happen. Do you have to be good at maths? Uh, not really. Um, most of the maths we do is applied. 
we do require a H7 and an O4 to make sure that you can cope with the material we cover with. In many of these courses, there's no actual maths modules. It's maths as part of something else. So you might learn, for example, how to value a customer in a marketing module, um, and that would be mathematical skill, but it would be in a particular way. We do require a little bit higher for the MH402 quantitative finance because it's got a lot of maths in the degree and uh, we recommend it for MH101, but it's not a requirement. Placements are organized by the university placement office. You decide where you go on placement, you interview for them, the employer employs you, you enter a contract with them for the time period, but we monitor and you come back to us every so often to make sure everything's going okay. If you want more information, uh, we're on our school website is minuthuniversity.ie slash business. You can email us at business at mu.ie. And Jamie mentioned a course finder. You can type Minuth course finder into Google and come up with a page. But if you want the direct link, it's apps.minuthuniversity.ie slash courses. And in there, you can type any of our codes or the name of any of our degrees. And a lot of our programs will come up and you can find out what you study in each year down to the detail of whether you'll have an exam or not in the module. Um, all that detail is there for you, full transparency. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm going to stop now and pass you over to Dr. Ryan, the head of School of Law and Criminology, who's going to talk to you about programmes in his school. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Joel. Um, and hello to everybody. My name is uh, Fergus Ryan. As, as Joel said, I'm the head of uh, the School of Law and Criminology. And hopefully people should be able to see my slides there. Um, which just sharing. Yes, indeed. I'll go there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Judith, uh, Joe. Um, so um, I'm going to be talking about law and criminology. Our, our school, uh, it's not just a law school, it's a school of law and criminology. Um, and um, we teach a variety of different um, uh, uh, programs and modules from undergraduate to postgraduate level, including a PhD. Um, uh, I wanted to say a little bit first about actually Minute. And actually just this January is my 10th year uh, in Minute, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, uh, it's a really uh, great place to be. It's a vibrant and diverse campus in a very pleasant and convivial location. There are excellent amenities, um, supportive staff, both academic and uh, professional uh, support staff. And I'd mentioned in particular the great careers office, counselling or admissions office, registrations, access uh, and academic and programme advisory. Some really great colleagues working in all of those areas and many more. We've active uh, sporting clubs and societies and we're surprisingly well connected. Um, sometimes unless you've been to Minute, uh, it's rare enough for people just to pass through uh, Minute. Usually you're coming here for a reason, but we're actually very um, well connected. Uh, we're on a train line from uh, Dublin City and stretching all the way to Sligo. Um, we also have a variety of bus routes and many of our students commute to campus um, from as far afield as, as Monaghan and Sligo uh, and uh, Port Leisha. Um, the key benefit, I think, whoever is studying in Minute is the flexibility. So one of the hallmarks, I think, from an academic perspective of Minute is the ability to study um, various disciplines such as law and criminology in combination with a wide variety of other disciplines. So you can, for instance, do law and Irish or criminology and sociology um, or um, uh, 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 business, let's say, in law. Uh, there are a wide variety of options. And indeed, you can study law or criminology with up to, I think it's about 28 other uh, disciplines. So there's a lot of flexibility in the system. Um, it's important perhaps to, to talk a little bit about what, what, what is law and, and more importantly, what is criminology? I think most people have a sense of what law is. Um, Law it describes two different phenomena. When people talk about the law, they're talking often about the rules that govern our behaviour. Um, but when we speak, talk about law and the study of law, we're also talking about the study of legal systems. Um, so law is a study of two different things. Firstly, the body of rules that are recognised as binding uh, on uh, people in a community or state. Um, and what diff what distinguishes law from other rules and, and, and social expectations is that laws are binding, legally binding. They're imposed upon and can be enforced among uh, persons by appropriate sanctions. The state or the government uh, can, uh, and well, I suppose more broadly, the state can impose uh, and enforce sanctions against people for bre breach of the law. Um, law, however, also uh, involves 
they study the systems under which such rules are made. Uh, so how, how, how do laws come into being? Who makes these laws? Uh, who uh, interprets them if there's a, a, a dispute about what a law means? Who actually decides definitively what a law means? Who applies them and enforces or, or, or implements them? So the in studying law, uh, you're actually not expected necessarily to know all of the uh, relevant laws. It's impossible, I think, to know um, from memory all of the laws of the land um, that apply. Um, but what we do hope is that by the end of a law degree, you will know uh, enough of those or be familiar broadly with where they are, but in particular that you will understand how legal systems uh, work as well. Um, law is a very useful discipline uh, for a wide variety of, of um, uh, areas. The study of law offers a very keen insight into how societies are regulated and how the legal system operates. And, and law is a little bit like chips. It goes with everything. Um, there are very few areas of law very few areas of life, I should say, that are not affected by law. If you're a farmer, you're subject to various laws uh, and regulations. If you are a, a business person, you're affected by the law. If you're working uh, in uh, any walk of life, uh, law affects you. And indeed, if you're just a, an ordinary consumer, a citizen, um, laws affect, for instance, uh, your purchasing of consumer goods, um, buying a house, getting a mortgage, things like that. It's all governed by law. Well, the study of law is a great way of learning how society works. It also helps to, to develop your ability to argue, reason, persuade and to solve um, uh, problems and, and particularly to avoid problems. I mean, a good lawyer uh, will help you to uh, not only to uh, solve problems when they arise, but also to avoid them, particularly through well-constructed uh, contracts and other legal documents. Um, so you might be familiar, I suppose, broadly with law. Criminology might be more of a mystery. Um, criminology is not uh, forensic science, so it's not CSI, uh, and it's not just about criminal psychology, although that does feature in our programmes. For instance, we have a great module on the psychology of terrorism offered by my colleague, Dr. John Morrison. So criminology um, is, is very much a social science. Um, it is nonetheless a scientific study. Um, it looks at what is defined as a crime? What are the processes that lead to something uh, that we per perceive to be wrong being defined as a crime? Uh, it also is a scientific study of those who are defined as criminals by society and very particularly of the causes and effects of crime. In particular, uh, criminologists look at what kind of social and psychological and other factors lead people into a life or a career of crime? And, and perhaps more importantly, what kind of factors dissuade people from criminality, either gender or um, uh, lead career criminals to, to, to give up uh, crime. So this is very much a study of the making of laws, the breaking of laws, and society's reaction to the breaking of those laws. So we ask questions like, how does conduct become defined as criminal? There are lots of things we might regard as wrong, but they're not actually criminal offences. Um, what factors may propel a person to commit crime or dissuade them from criminality? And how should society best react to crime to prevent it? And indeed, uh, when it happens. So we look at things like, for instance, policing uh, and policing techniques and policing policy. We look at um, uh, the, um, uh, the sentencing uh, and uh, what are the most appropriate um, punishments or remedies for a crime being committed. And in particular, many of my colleagues look at alternatives to prison, um, such as restorative justice uh, processes. So criminology is, is actually a very popular uh, subject at Minute and one of the two key um, subjects that we teach in the school. Um, Law uh, and criminology will be of interest too and will particularly suit people who are interested in social justice and human rights. And um, people who are interested in, in reading and in nuances in language and words and their impact uh, may be uh, interested in particular in, in law. If you enjoy history or politics, languages, current affairs, law may be something that interests you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be an expert in all of those things. Law particularly requires attention to detail. I mean, a, a good lawyer should be somebody who's at least broadly comfortable with doing paperwork 
and who's good at arguing and persuading. And that's one of, I suppose, the key features of a good lawyer is the ability to persuade somebody to make a construct a good argument, even where um the um as the case one is making is perhaps not particularly strong. Uh, everybody's entitled to a legal defense, in particular in a criminal context. A good criminologist um, is somebody who is socially concerned, socially aware, in particular is conscious of the abuse of rights and inequalities in society. Um, but I think what particularly marks out a good criminologist is the critical thinking. Uh, a good criminologist is someone who will make decisions based on evidence who will challenge populist ideas and knee-jerk reactions. For instance, um, uh, very often people perceive that crime is always increasing and things are getting worse and it was better in my father or my grandfather or grandmother's day. And that's not necessarily the case when you actually look at the evidence. Uh, sometimes uh, you find that, in fact, things may be better than they used to be in the past. Um, so a good criminologist... Um, makes decisions based on evidence and challenges these knee-jerk reactions that sometimes can prevail are quite instinctual and natural but that uh, often are wrong a good criminologist will look at the root of problems, in particular the underlying rather than the immediate uh, causes uh, or the underlying in addition to the immediate causes and will be particularly concerned with social structures and support uh, for the vulnerable so if you want to study either law or criminology at Minute, there are lots of different options and different ways of doing so. And they broadly uh, divide up into three categories, um, the LLB, the BCL and the BA. And the LLB is a Bachelor of Laws, and that is a single major in law. It's a four year degree. And if you do the LLB, you are predominantly just studying law. So if you know that you really like law and you've you've thought about it and you've maybe, uh, you maybe you might well have done like an internship or a um a a a a, a um a to transition year um um week uh, in uh, let's say a law firm and you know that you're really going to like this uh, the LLB a single major maybe for you but you can also combine law with other disciplines such as let's say law and language uh, law and business uh, law and criminology to the BCL degree and the BCL degree is ordinarily three years long. It's MH502. And you can take law in combination with business, accounting, criminology, or a variety of other art subjects, including most languages, most, uh, I say, modern European languages, um, uh, Irish, uh, French, uh, Spanish, uh, and Chinese studies on the BCL Law and Arts. We also have a new um, BCL Law and Languages that's coming on stream this year. That's a four year degree, including a year abroad uh, or a year, uh, a year on placement. It is a um, it differs from the BCL Law and Arts in that there are integrated elements. So, for instance, on the BCL Law and Languages, if you're studying French, you'll also study French law. Uh, and in addition, you'll study legal translation in French or, for instance, in uh, Irish or, or in German. Uh, so the BCL Law and, and Languages is a more integrated degree where uh, the law and the language uh, overlap. And it's worth noting that in addition to French, German and Spanish, we offer the Law and Languages degree um, uh, with Irish. Uh, Irish is one of the options as well. Finally, you can do law as part of the BA uh, and also criminology as part of the BA. Uh, and the idea behind this broadly is that if you're not really sure you want to do law or criminology, uh, and, but you want to kind of, uh, try it and see uh, you can take law as part of the uh, BA in year one and in particular if you decide you like it at the end of year uh, one uh, and if you pass law and you passed year one you can transfer uh, subject to certain conditions um, but it doesn't it, once you've passed usually that's sufficient you can transfer from the BA uh, into year two of the LLB the BCL Law and Arts or BCL Law and Criminology or the BCL uh, Law and Business or Accounting now there are some uh, terms and conditions for in particular the BCL Law and Accounting and the BCL Law and Business uh, uh, will we explain those to people at the very beginning of the degree so that that, that 
they clearly know what they need to do in order to get into one of those um denominated uh, degrees. But um, well, the advantage of this is particular is if you're not sure you're going to get the points for law, or you're not sure you want to continue with law, um, but you want to keep that option open. The transfer route is available through uh, the BA. Uh, you can combine um, criminology or law with a wide variety of other disciplines. So for instance, you can do law with sociology, English, Irish, politics, class, Six um, business, as I mentioned before, maths, computer science. There are some combinations that are not possible but for, for timetabling reasons rather than anything else. Um, but broadly speaking, there's a wide variety of combinations on the BA and indeed on the BCL uh, as well. There are lots of opportunities for travel and placement. Um, in relation to careers, broadly, it's a, both law and criminology are a very good foundation for a variety of careers, but you don't have to have a law degree to become a barrister or a solicitor. It helps, but you don't absolutely have to have one. On the other hand, um, you don't have to become a lawyer just because you have a law degree. Lots of people, probably on two thirds of, of our students um, doing a law degree, including the BCL or as part of the BA, would, uh, wouldn't necessarily go into law straight away after their degree. So uh, these are both uh, um, subjects that are a good basis for a wide variety of careers, particularly with criminology. Um, uh, we've been speaking with the Gardaí and the Department of Justice and both uh, uh, organisations um, have strongly um, uh, commended uh, criminology as a discipline as being very useful uh, in their particular fields. Um, there are opportunities for travel and placement as part of the degree. There are Erasmus and study abroad opportunities um, between years two and three on the BCL and in year three of the LLB, although some of those uh, opportunities are uh, competitive. There are... Um, Plenty of, of staff, certainly, to support you within and outside the school. Um, the School of Law and Criminology is the largest school of its kind uh, in the state, so we're bigger than most other law schools. Now, um, uh, uh, we have 58 full-time staff, 50 uh, full-time academics, and 30-plus uh, part-time staff, and uh, a wide variety of other um, supporting staff as well. Um, we have extensive postgraduate opportunities, masters and PhD programs, in particular if you decide you're not going to do law now, it's possible to come back and do, for instance, our LLM in international justice uh, later. And finally, it's not all work and no play. We have a wide variety of societies uh, that have a lot of um, activities, including, I suppose, rather studious activities like negotiation competitions and moot court competitions, but also a lot of social events uh, as well. Uh, so I would encourage you in particular to be active in the various societies that can be very useful not just for your CV, but also for making friends and um, uh, and and um, for you know uh, socialising in college. The societies are really great, and there are I think more than ninety clubs and societies uh, at uh, Menud. Though for more information, you can log into minuteuniversity.ie forward slash law or follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or email us at law at mu.ie. But you may also have questions now. Um, I'm going to hand over, however, to um, uh, a LLM student, uh, Katie Birch, uh, who is a graduate of the BCL uh, Law and Arts. And uh, Katie's going to talk a little bit about her experience as a law student. So th thanks so much, Katie, for, for speaking tonight. Thanks Fergus. Um, so yeah as you may know I done the BCL um, first with Maynooth and um, I done the law with arts I done law and anthropology which funnily enough through anthropology I actually got to do a few criminology subjects and there was a few I guess intersections between them and um, I done a forensics class, a security class, a crime and society kind of classes. Um, but yeah, for law, I guess I chose just as a serious subject, you know, I guess it seems like a subject you can get a job for when you're 17 or 18 and applying to college. So I didn't honestly didn't think that much of it, but I ended up really enjoying it. And um, I honestly didn't know what the law was. I couldn't have given you any definitions before I started but by the end of the first semester I knew that I was keeping it on and um, the lecturers were so friendly and um, I was online for my first year but 
uh, they had a certain way of just breaking the ice. Um, like for my master's currently, I had a placement option and we done online interviews for it. And my, I honestly, to this day, I don't know what the issue was, but my camera and mic were for some reason not working. Even they work perfectly now though. For whatever reason, they weren't working during my interview, but two lecturers from the department um, really helped me facilitate that interview, even though I had no way of communicating with them when it was supposed to be scheduled. So, um, yeah, they were just really helpful in that way. Um, and the placement is something I'd recommend everyone do. I didn't do it in my undergrad. I regret it, but came back, done the master's, and I got to do the placement. Um, so yeah, the placement and the societies, I definitely recommend doing the societies. That's another thing that I didn't do and then regretted it. And then I came, I came back stronger and joined them um, on the committee of the criminology society and just a general member of the law society and the flax society. And they're great for, I guess, confidence and making friends, you know, when you're sitting in a lecture, you, number one, you might not end up sitting beside anyone because the lecture halls are huge. Number two, you might not get a chance to talk to someone. You know, it can be daunting talking to someone beside you. But if you go to the meetings for the societies, you could talk to anyone. Um, and even if you don't join at once, don't be afraid to join in your second year or whatever. Um, because I found them to be very helpful. So, yeah, I'd say that's all I'd my experience and what I'd recommend for first years thinking about doing law. Uh, th thanks so much, uh, Katie. Appreciate that very much, and and it's great to hear of your your experience um and and insights indeed. And particularly again, I'd reflect the point about joining society is a really great way to make friends and and get to know people. I'm going to hand back over to Judith now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fergus, and thanks, colleagues. Indeed, um. If we have any further questions, please put them into the Q&A. Otherwise, I would defer to some of the more commonly asked questions that we have on our web chat. We have on the website um, every day. Um, to, usually questions come in around the, taking the arts route into whether it be a denominated law or degree or business degree. Are students at a disadvantage by not going straight into a BCL degree, for example, or one of the um, BBS degrees? by going into the arts route? Is, are they losing out? No, not really. I mean, they do a little bit less of the main subject in first year. That's the only difference. But they do other things that are also very interesting and very useful. You know, let's say you did, you know, business and law and uh, anthropology in first year, you'd give yourself a lot of different choices for second year. You'd learn about different subjects and you'll have a slightly different experience when you get into second year, but you have more different things to draw on. You know, these things will be useful for you in a business degree or in a law degree. So actually it's a little bit richer in some ways, um, but then again, a lot of people like to study the subject they want to do straight away and they go into an LLB or a BCL or a BBS program or a BA finance or, or whatever it is, or a BSc program. So it's up to individuals. And also some people just don't know what they want to do. So having the option to take up to four art subjects um, and then to progress you know, with different options is something that a lot of people who have the points and who could do the BBSs and the BCLs and the LLB, they make that choice because they're not sure. And it's another way of investigating and thinking about things because what you study in Leaving Search is not necessarily the same as what you do in college. So like from, from my case, from business, um, if you do business for the Leaving Cert, you do maybe a couple of weeks of marketing in the whole thing. And then we have a full degree in it and you spend three years going in and out of the different aspects and details about different projects. And same in law, you may not have the opportunity to study law in school um, or you might have a little bit of an exposure through family or through a placement, as Fergus said. But you get the opportunity to study it in a bit more detail and get to see if you really want to do it. And if, if you don't, that's fine. You can do one of your other subjects in arts or you can transfer to a different degree. And there are those four weeks at the start of the year in the arts degree to kind of to choose um those subjects. Is it a big jump then, do you think, Fergus, to go from the Leaving Search maybe or as a mature student and then to come in to do the first year of a degree in terms of the, the academic challenges? 
There's a bit of an adjustment, certainly, but um, uh, I, I, I think, I mean, it is worth noting that most of the students who start the year, finish the year and pass uh, everything, it's uh, as, as a general proposition, that's not a guarantee, uh, but it is a, um, you know, general observation um, uh, that students, it uh, takes a little bit of time to adjust. And it's important to bear in mind that we understand that, that uh, believe it or not, your lecturers are once first year students as well. And we know what it was like to be a first year. So um, uh, it's important to bear that in in, in mind um, Katie sorry you had a hand up uh, I don't know I just think I have one useful thing in relation to that which is I not everyone agrees with this I found first year so hard it was my worst grades I ever got in first year and I wouldn't have was never a particularly bad student so that disheartened me a lot but even though I had a very bad first year I went into second year and I got really high grades from that point on. Like I had a very bad first year and it didn't, it, I don't know. I think I was better for it in the end. It, it, people have different ways. I mean, some people find the structure of school maybe a bit limiting. And then when you come to college and university, a, a typical thing would be you wouldn't have very many hours on campus and it can be, sometimes very hard to kind of manage your time and manage yourself when you've 12 to 14 to 15 hours a week over a couple of days and you know getting up late the odd morning and missing the odd one doesn't seem too much until you realize that you know you've missed three hours of criminal law this week or three hours of marketing this week and you have to catch up and you know it, there's nobody there to kind of take you through it and you need to do it yourself and you know you might need to do extra reading to make sure that you can catch up so one of the, the points Jamie made and I think Katie mentioned as well about turning up and going to class is really important and it's a good way to you know meet other people um you know if you're coming from a school where maybe some of your friends are doing different degrees in Maynooth or elsewhere it's a great the classes are a great way to meet other people you'll see them in other classes every week you know, they might give you notes some week, you might give them something else. Um, and then, you know, you can find out more about how things work and the clubs and societies, as, as everybody's kind of mentioned, are, are an important way to get to know people outside your degree. You know, that there's lots of things happening, lots of sports and facilities. You might take up juggling and circus, for example. It could Indeed. be your passion. Um, <laughs> you have a very active one of those. One of the, I actually know the graduate who set it up from a long time ago. So he's delighted it's still going. Maybe 20 years later, I think he told me. So the other day. So, you know, there's lots of things you can do. I mean, it, it's a big university, but with a kind of a smaller feel. I think that's one of the ways that a lot of us would feel that, that the way things work here. Yes, indeed. Tea Appreciation Society is one of my particular uh, favourites. Um, I think we're we're done really um, in terms of questions. And my thanks to the head of uh, the School of Law and Business, Dr. Fergus Ryan, and to the head of the School of Business, um, Joseph Coughlin, Law and Criminology, I should say, Fergus Ryan, and indeed to our, our students, uh, Katie and Jamie. And thank you all for attending us uh, the evening. And we hope you got some value out of it. Okay. Thanks, Judith. And thanks, everybody. Nice to... Nice to uh, you. Good night. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.